Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna, and another episode in the Adventures of Weathering. Um, last night, you know, with the uh, the, the boo boo I made <laughs> trying to paint, <laughs> I'm still laughing at it. Just <laughs> it was just so bad. Anyway, I couldn't live with it. I was thinking about it all day today. It's like you know. Why did you even try to paint it? You should have sponge painted it. Completely, the sponge painting completely exited my brain. And uh, I didn't even think of doing that. So I just fixed it, but I didn't finish doing the top cord. And I was like, oh, I need to show, you know, sponge painting. I know everybody knows what sponge painting is, but this is my video, so I'm going to go through it. Just another iteration of the same thing everybody else shows you. I don't even know why you guys watch this video. It's nothing new that you haven't seen already, but it's something for me to do and, and put up and, you know, just add another video to my, to my account. Anyway, so um, basically what I did is, um, well, I'll explain it when I move the camera over to the bench. And after that's done, I'll just put a gloss coat over the top just to seal it all. And, um, and here I'm explaining it and I said I was going to explain it when I go over the bench so let me set up over there. Right so what I was explaining was I, um, I took some of the blue and I sponge painted this is where the bad spot was and I sponge painted the blue over it then I mixed up some more um, uh, rust color this color here and then I sponge painted over that and now I'm sponge painting it all the way around but it looks like it's already dried up so let me mix up a little bit more. Here, I'll just do it right here. I only put a couple drops in. I don't need that much. So let me get this. This is Hull Red. Tamiya Hull Red. Let me just put one, two, three drops in there. No use wasting a pipette on this. It's just going to go really fast. And then flat black. One drop, two drops, and that's fine. There we go. All right. And then I got my sponge here that I tore the ends off of so I'm going to dip that sponge into the paint blot it off and just go finish I'm not worried about the inside edge Move this out of the way more. I want that top cord. Now, when I first started on this, I said I didn't want it all rust buckety. I mean, it's getting pretty beat up. On the next one, I'm going to try something different. Probably do some chipping, but hopefully not as much. It just kind of like got out of hand. But I want the top cord. Because this is a scrap gondola. And scrap gondolas have a tendency to really get beat up. That's why I put all the scratches down the side and, and such.
maybe get on the ribs a little bit. A little bit different sized chips on those ribs so that they're, it's not so uniform looking. I think that's one of the things I didn't like about it. It was all so uniform looking. The paint's drying up here. Go around, put something in there. All right, I think that I like that much better. It's inspiring me more. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more on these ribs. Oh, my paint's all dried up. That's all right. Get a little bit more on there. Like so. Okay. So we'll call the chipping done. So we got that side. We got that side. We got the ends. Now, Vincent, you're seeing this blue in the camera. I mean, like I said, in the in the camera, it's looking much darker than it is. It's very light blue actually but in the light here and in the camera it's looking looking pretty pretty dark much darker and there's the top so definitely a fixed uh, where was it right here that's where it used to be that cow poop blob right there so right now I got let's see these these are the decals for it here. So I've got, uh, let's see, these down, these ones here, all of these down here, those are like general purpose scrap gondolas. These ones up here are coil steel gondolas. And that they have um, uh, a coil steel loading only label, and that will go on this end of the car here and this panel will be painted black and it'll have the uh, coil steel loading um, uh, label there. Now what you don't see on this decal sheet is I got everything ready but I don't. Let's see here. There it is. These are the original decals I had made for my Copper State Railway and they're basically only locomotive decals but this is actually a boxcar decal. These are the locomotive decals. I'm going to use one one of these, or well, these two, and they'll go on the middle panel right in right here. So that's, I've got so many sheets of these that I don't have to, I can use up whatever I want on them. But I'll be using these for the, the side of the gondola. These go on boxcars and hopper cars and, and such. So. So that's the decals. I've got these ones cut out already, so I'll go over there and, and I'll get them put on. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to put just a real quick, I'll put a clear coat right over the top of this top cord to seal all that paint in that I just did. All right, so there's one side of the car decal. I have the other decals here. Um, a while ago, maybe a couple months maybe, uh, one of my followers asked if I could show decaling. And maybe I'll do that as a separate video, but I'll show like, I'll put this decal here on the other side. You can get an idea of what I do. I always use the nuclear option of Walther's Full Strength Solvacet. I like it a lot. That's all I've ever used. I have tried other stuff and it's good. I guess, you know, I haven't tried the Tamiya stuff and everybody, I mean, I'm not everybody, but I hear good um, reports from it. But 
I'm going to stick with what I what works for me, and I use full strength Solvacet. So this decal, this decal, this decal, this decal, this one, this one, and this one. Those are all my design, um, and I get my decals printed at Precision Design Company. Um, this is a micro scale decal, and this is one of my on my from my custom sheet that I showed you earlier. Uh, that I had done at micro scale. So for black and white, um, uh, precision design is very good with black and white. No, no um, company. I, I'm not. I'm not bashing anybody, but all the companies that do um, like printer decals, anything other than black and white, you're going to get some dithering. And it depends on how, you know, tight the dithering is or what. I, I guess that's what it's called when you see the little dots and, and stuff like that. Um, through uh, Optivisors that I always wear, you can see it plain as day, of course. But when you stand back, it's not as noticeable. But the other option to not get that would be go and get custom decals done from Microscale or um, Cartograph in Italy. Now with Microscale, your minimum order is 250 sheets and Cartograph is 300 sheets. I don't need 250 or 300 sheets for um, gondolas that only have black and stuff. Um, it's when you need like really crisp colors that you want to go to the, um, the screen printed decals. But these ones work great. Um, Precision Design Company, the film is absolutely fantastic. It's super, super thin. So. Let me go ahead and do this. I've I've also got the ends done. So let me go ahead and do this side. So with the uh, Precision Design Company decals, it they come off the sheets pretty quick. It's basically just a quick dunk in the water. Now with these decals you don't want to float them with any decal solution only with water I use uh, Tamiya decal tweezers these things are really good my friend Tom told me about it. He said, you got to get these things. And I did. And oh my goodness, they're fantastic. Get myself a blotter here. Blot it out from underneath. Add a little bit more on top to float it. Now, I got to measure. I always measure my decals so that everything's the same. From the underneath the top cord to the top of the lettering is 0.14. See what I got here. Point one two has to come down a little bit. Need some more water on there. Measure it. There we go, right on. Right on point one four. And then I just give it a look, you know, looking down at it basically. And uh, 
just making sure that the bottom is straight across. Sometimes I'll take the the uh, straight edge and put it across and see what we got going here. Everything looks good. Now we'll squeegee all of this water off a little bit at a time. If you try to do too much, it'll move the decal. Get that off the in there. There we go, and now we'll go with the nuclear option. Well, that way he said just put it on and let it sit. I don't do that. I put it on. I don't want it to puddle. So I clean off my brush. And I'll go soak up the excess. Now with microscale decals, yeah, you don't want to uh, manipulate those too much. Those things will fold up and wrinkle and all that. These decals don't wrinkle. Okay, so that's one, and I'll just go ahead and put the next number on, or the next one on over here, and then that'll be it. Sometimes, sometimes I can take these decals off the sheet or off the piece and just lay them on with the tweezers but for some reason this decal film is so thin that it wants to curl sometimes no that one went okay okay good So, I got that one in. Now what I'll do is I'll measure. I'll measure to the bottom of the uh, numbers. It's 0.38 or 36. 0.36. Has to go up a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Now I'll give it a look see down the make sure it looks right. Yep, looks good. Now I'll go get all that water out from it. And we'll put some solvent set on it.
Now the reason I say don't float these with a setting solution, like uh, what is that? Microscale, microsol, is it it? The the lighter one. These this decal film is very fragile and it'll start sticking very quickly, and you won't be able to manipulate the location. So just float them in water. And there we got that decal in place. So I don't think I need to show you the rest of it. You get the idea. And uh, let me get that done and put a clear coat on it. All right, so now the, um, the gondola has the decals on it. I was able to recut the uh, scratches through the uh, decals where the scratch passed through them. Um, there wasn't very many spots. I think there was like three, maybe four but it cut through nicely and then when I put a wash on it it'll fill back in and, uh, and, and give that scratch look back to it. Um, so right now it has a gloss on it. I'm going to let it sit for like an hour and then I'm going to put my um, Tamiya Mix um, satin varnish on it which I make by uh, combining one bo or see two bottles of XF86 to one bottle of X22 clear and just put those I put it in the larger um, Tamiya bottle just I have two of them ready to go and then I just have my mixture and I'll thin that with um, uh, 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 satin varnish one part satin varnish to one part thinner so it's uh, a nice thin mix and I'll put it on wet it comes out to a beautiful beautiful uh, satin varnish which will be ready for um, weathering. I never use a flat finish on my models. I don't like the look of flat paint on a model especially, especially when um, if you put like a, a satin or a semi-gloss to start with your, your weathering uh, the, the paint looks like it's painted over metal. It gives you that um, not a metallic look but it gives you that look of paint like an enamel over metal. It looks really good. Plus your chips and scratches uh, look better in a, um, a satin or semi-gloss. And when you, I let, I let the natural dullness of, of artist oil washes, pin washes, and pigments to do the flattening of the paint and not a flat finish. So I'm going to let that sit. I'll put a um, satin varnish on it soon and then I'll get to doing the um, um, the washes, the pin washes, the washes and, and such. So I'm glad I thought of you know doing the um, the sponge painting. I like the look of the top court a lot better. I think I could have done a better job of it but uh, I think it's gonna turn out okay. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway Thanks for watching, and um, it'll probably be about a day before I go to doing the washes and pin washes because I want to let the clear coats thoroughly um, set up and cure and before I hit them with uh, a more um, aggressive uh, solvents. And